Hi everybody, welcome back to our Hack-A-Mall series. This time we are going to hack the spring 2021, because we're in 2021, trivet tray. This is one of my favorite pieces, not only because of the neutral print that it has, um, but mainly because it can actually serve a couple of different functions. And I'm actually going to take it and hack it into a serving tray slash charcuterie board. Um, so one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to get our uh, supplies. You're going to need a paint of choice. I'm going to use a black chalkboard paint so that I can write the name of cheeses or anything that, you know, any kind of thing that I'm going to create this charcuterie board with. Um, I hope I'm saying it right, charcuterie board, but <laughs> um, you can use it to make candy charcuterie boards for kids or, you know, when you have, back when we're gathering again and you're going to have a couple of friends over for a nice uh, cheese and wine and grapes and whatever else you want to put on here, um, you can have that and, and write the names on it. So I'm going to use the black chalkboard paint. I'm going to need a drill because we will be drilling holes for some handles. You don't have to. I wanted to use it as a serving tray as well. So we can, you know, you can travel with it. Um, and so we're going to be using a drill for that. If you're going to be adding a handle, you're going to want a handle of choice. Uh, I'm painting it black and I'm using a black handle, but you can definitely paint it whatever color hand, whatever color you want and attach whatever handle you want. Really get creative with it. There's a hundred different uh, styles of candles at your local hardware store. Um, sometimes if you have some laying around from a home renovation, use those. I had a couple as well. So first off, you want to clean your surface and make sure that it's, uh, you know, obviously nice and clean. I suggest that you sand a little bit off the pattern so that it doesn't show through your paint. I got pre or what is it? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, so I got a chalkboard paint that you don't need to prep beforehand. Um, but I do suggest giving it a light sanding just to remove any bumps, anything, make it smooth. I've already done that to this board before we, we got here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. One of the things that I want to do, and you're going to turn this over very gently because the minute you bend it over, it is going to collapse on it. I am going to measure my handle and you can use that and you can do that by getting your regular old measuring tape, measuring the handles. I'm a little bit creative, not lazy. And I usually get a piece of tape, cut a piece. You can see me do that. I line it up here, right? Try to make sure that both of your holes are in the center. You're going to get a black magic marker or whatever magic marker pen anything that you want and just kind of mark the holes you're going to see me do that here and I've marked kind of like the spacing right then you're going to want to get and you can keep it on the handle or you can do whatever it is that you want you're going to measure the difference between sorry the handle so between holes it's about a little over two and a half so what I'm going to do is that I am going to measure two different things. I'm going to measure from heat from the width and it's about nine inches. So half of that is going to be four and a half. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to mark that. Where's my marker? I'm going to mark that on my board so that I know that this is the four and a half. And then I'm going to measure the half from here so that I have that marked. And then what I can do is, so I have it, oops, let me do it this way. So I have half marked. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up. So I'm going to line it up where I want my hole. I want to make sure that I'm in the center of the board, right? So I am doing this about an inch and a quarter from the top edge to the middle of the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and drill my holes here and let's get to that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and drill my first hole. Okay. 
Yeah. So now that I've drilled all four of my holes, and I did it from, you could do it either from, you know, from the front to the back or the back to the front. I did it from the back to the front. Um, sometimes you'll get a cleaner hole if you drill, obviously, your, sur your top surface down. Uh, I'm not Martha Stewart, so if you guys know a better way of drilling these holes and maybe you should drill something, pop it in the comments below and let us know, hey, it's better to do it this way because of this X, Y reason. Um, I, my husband always says that I just do things however I want and then, you know, I figure out how to fix the mess that I already made. So either way, we've drilled our four holes and now we're going to get to painting. And so I, you know, usually try to put the most amount of paint on my board the first time uh, so that then I can just kind of just work it out so that I'm never, you know, I'm creating kind of like the same flow of the brush strokes. And because this does open up a little bit, I am going to want to paint a little bit of the crevice. I mean, this is just your personal preference on what you like to do. I cannot stand to see like a little bit of a white lip. So I'm just going to give it, you know, and you can definitely paint all the way in there. I'm just going to give it a little bit. And then what I usually like to do is just run once over so that it has all the brush strokes kind of going the same way. It should not dry with brush strokes, but I'm always like super paranoid about it. So, and then while this side is drying, I'm going to paint this other side that I dried a little bit so that I can get definitely like two coats out of this because I didn't sand the print all the way off and so I just want to go ahead and make sure that I get full coverage of this I'm excited because charcuterie boards are a huge thing now people are just getting so creative with them and I I'm here for that anytime you can have something really nicely done and they've gotten so artistic with them there's like blogs about them and just all the different meats cheeses we had some people do a candy one which was really amazing and let's see here all right so i'm going to turn it on its side to get the edges and now that you're prepping this surface you can also use this since you've prepped and, and you're going to prep and seal this surface, you can obviously use, you know, your, you can put your food directly on it. The only thing I would say is, especially with the chalkboard paint, is some meats that have a little bit more fat and then more grease, it may end up staining your finish. But because you're going to have a lot of paint left over, maybe you can just 
every so often just touch it up. But, all right, so I have this side done. And I've done the legs a little bit. I didn't do the, the inside, because you're not really gonna see it. I don't really think you see the bottom, but just in case, I did cover that. All right. So painting all the sides. Just giving it a little bit of a once over. Really hoping I don't like Okay. So now I'm just gonna paint the bottom leg because you know, like I said, I and just in case you see it, I didn't want I don't want anybody being like, oh, this wasn't really this color. All right. So now, once this dries, oop, just kind of like making sure that I have everything kind of even. And so now once this dries, we can go ahead and affix our handles. So let's give this a little bit of time. Now that we've let our trivet tray mostly dry we are going to attach the handles and secure the trivet so when you received your trivet tray you should have gotten a orange baggie and in that bag there was your allen wrench a screw and a washer and you have your block of wood that is going to secure the tray so let's flip it over and we have a how-to instructional video if you need to catch that on how to secure or assemble your trivet tray. But real quick, I'm just gonna put the washer on the screw. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up and secure it. And don't wanna over tighten it because I never want the wood to you know, crack or anything like that. There we go. And now that I have assembled that, I'm going to grab the handles that I chose I've already, we pre-drilled our holes before we painted. And the reason I did this is because in case of any cracks, when you lift the wood, you don't have to go back and retouch it. And so let's secure our handles. And I chose black handles for this. I'm kind of wishing I would have picked some gold handles because I think it would be really nice. So definitely, if you ever want to change up the look of your trivet tray and not have to repaint it, an easy hack after that is to just change up the handles. As long as you're always picking the same size, you should be fine. You shouldn't have to redraw holes or anything like that. So let's secure the other side. So much fun. All right, and so with this handle, we have a Phillips or a star screw. That's what I call them. And we're just gonna go ahead and secure the last handle. All right. And that is your trivet tray with handles. However you wanna hack it, share with us. We would love to see the different ways and the different styles that you guys you know, create for this trivet tray. Until then, you can. I'm going to use it for a charcuterie board. You guys can put candles on it. Uh, you can create a candy tray, whatever you, your heart desires. Uh, whatever you do, just share it with us. We love to see how creative you get. So until then, tune in to all of our hack -em all series. We are so excited to share all the different projects that we have for you. Till then, next.
next time.